Welcome back. Well, the marriage of healthcare and tech becoming even more important. The healthcare sector seeing a boom in artificial intelligence implementation. AI and quantum techniques company Sandbox AQ recently partnering with biotech firm Ioncology to help accelerate brain cancer treatment with AI driven drug discovery. Ioncology CEO says, quote, with Sandbox AQ's ability to model and rapidly optimize molecules across vast chemical and biological spaces, we're well positioned to advance a truly transformative therapeutic for glioblastoma and eventually for other treatment-resistant solid tumors. Joining me now is the CEO of Sandbox AQ, Jack Hittery. Jack, great to see you. Maria, good to be here. It's, How you doing? Yeah, it's, I'm doing well. And, you know, we've been talking about the marriage of healthcare and technology now for a long time, for years, in terms of, you know, doing uh, surgeries remotely. But now AI creates a whole new opportunity. Tell us about this deal and what you expect to happen here. Well, there's a number of conditions and diseases out there that have really been a challenge for medicine for decades now. When you look at brain cancer, glioblastoma, a form of brain cancer, uh, 40 years of research, Maria, nothing to show, right? So the industry, uh, the academics have not really brought anything forward. And what, what we need is to use AI to model how we can get these therapeutics into the brain. There's a barrier to get things into the brain, the blood-brain barrier, got to get it into the brain. And then what's going to take probably, Maria, is a combination therapy. So we know about the immunotherapies, these wonderful new drugs for the past 10 years that have saved millions of lives, people with melanoma, people with lung cancer, other things like that. It's been difficult to treat brain cancer with these immunotherapies, going beyond chemotherapy, going beyond radiation, uh, really getting at the, at, the, at the heart of the issue. But with AI now, not AI, not large language models, but large quantitative models, models trained really on biology, on medicine, on the chemistry of bringing these things together, we can now model these combination therapies. Medicine one is waking up the immune system, making sure that it sees that brain cancer. Medicine two is to protect those immune cells so they can go after and kill that brain cancer off. Yeah, because when I, when I think about AI, I think about what it can do for data you know, organizing, mining data to get answers quickly. I don't understand the connection of actually attacking brain cancer. Yeah, so this is really the next wave of AI. Um, AI that's trained on social media or data, things like that, those are language models. We can use those in many different ways, productivity, customer service, marketing, a lot of good applications there. But when it comes to a therapeutic for brain cancer, for Alzheimer's, for dementia, for Parkinson's, for these key conditions that we haven't had really great solutions for, we've got to have an AI trained on biology itself, on the molecules themselves. This is a very different kind of AI, and this is why we're very happy and proud to partner with Ioncology. This is intellectual property, biotech, Maria, that came out of Duke University and University of Florida, Gainesville. This is a, an exciting new approach to attacking brain cancer, but we need this kind of AI to model it well before it gets into humans. Early tests in a phase one of one form of this type of therapeutic shows very early promise, but now let's see what we can do together with Ioncology and Sandbox I AQ. love this, Jack. This is so Thank important. You. So thanks for working on that. Look, it's the reason that most of the Magnificent Seven companies have been raising and driving capital into expanding AI. That's They're right. They're making it a core part of their business. They're making it a priority. I mean, look what happened overnight uh, with these stocks, Microsoft and Meta. They're both soaring this morning on the heels of of their quarterly numbers, which showed more investment into AI. You say more companies need to leverage AI. Well, absolutely. When you look at the Magnificent Seven, their market caps of just those seven companies, companies like Microsoft, NVIDIA, Google, and others, those just seven companies, their market caps represent 34% of the market cap of the S&P 500. Right, so that's moving that's up. That's a big number. Right, that's a big, big number. And my prediction on this show today is that it's going to achieve 40 plus percent of the S&P 500 market cap uh, in the near term. Uh, where's the rest of the economy? 
where's the rest of the S&P 500? Well, when you look at the rest of them, they're not really incorporating AI into their core business. They're using AI on the periphery for productivity, but it's not driving the automakers. Look at the automakers, how they're lagging behind. Yeah. Let's look at the drug companies, the pharma companies, right? They need to be using AI in the core of their business. Uh, looking at the energy sector, the power sector, we need AI in that sector as well. Yeah. So when you look at the GDP of America, $28 trillion right now, Magnificent Seven is only 11% revenue-wise over the GDP. That's 85, 90% of the GDP of America that's not yet really using AI to drive core business. Well, that's and that's why you're seeing this divergence yeah. of the market caps of the MAG7 versus the rest of the economy. Well, it's a good point. And, you know, President Trump, as he's called it, the golden age, he's calling it the golden age because not just of his policies, but also tapping into the energy space in terms of powering up this AI, really uh, incredible growth story. The president wants to ensure that America leads the race in AI across the world. He put together an action plan last week to focus on building infrastructure and data centers and innovation. Jack, you've said in the past that the power sector is limiting AI and ultimately economic growth. Tell us more about that. That's exactly right. The number one thing that we have as a challenge right now in our country is the power sector. If we want our country to grow, and we do, we want that GDP growth, we want the AI growth, we need more power. That is right now holding us back. When we look at the numbers that Google, Microsoft, and others just talked about, $85 billion of capital investment that Google just announced for more data centers, Microsoft, NVIDIA, others announcing similar numbers. We need now to invest in the power to drive those data centers. But Maria, it's not just about data centers. We also want to bring advanced manufacturing. This administration has done a great job to now start to attract investment in America. Look at the numbers from the deal with the EU just on Sunday in Scotland. $600 billion commitment from EU to invest in America. Huge. $550 billion from Japan invest in America. Let's South take some Korea of that, as well. Exactly. South Korea just announced as well. Let's take some of that money, Maria, and invest in creating turbines, gas turbines, to generate power. Yeah. Right now, Maria, there's a four-year wait, a four-year wait list to get a gas turbine to generate power in a gas plant. Yeah. So even if you wanted to bring lots of great manufacturing here, we don't have the power. We need 500 new gas turbines immediately. Yeah. And so what we're trying to work out is how to bring this new money in, the Japanese commitments, the EU commitments. Let's use that to build these factories here in the United States of America to build these gas turbines. Yeah. And if we do that kind of almost under a DPA, like a Defense Production Act, where because this is urgent right now. Absolutely. If we want that GDP growth, we just posted some good numbers, 3% growth That's on right. a quarterly basis just now. And I think we could do even better. We can add a few more percentage points of GDP growth over the next few years if we invest in power and specifically in gas turbines. Well, well, that is what Christopher Rice and, and, and Doug Burgum and Lee Zeldin are working on right now. Yeah, along with Howard Lutnick as well. And, and of course, Howard yeah. Lutnick on, on the trade deals. But yeah. look, the president says he wants all hands on deck, not just gas and oil, but nuclear as well. Yeah, nuclear is very important. And so two forms of nuclear, traditional nuclear, those big plants that you see, those take about 10, 15 years to build. And then SMR, small modular reactors, they're faster, about seven, eight years, but still gas is the fastest thing we can put in the ground yeah. right now. And we have an overabundance of gas in America. We just need the gas turbines to drive that power. All right. Great stuff, Jack. Great to talk with you about it. Good Thanks, to see Maria. you. Thank you. Jack Kittery joining us. Stay with us. We'll be right back.